Hey guys, if you know me, you know that I love movies. And one of my favorite things about movies is the special effects. They've always wowed me growing up. I love the illusion that they give, it's amazing. And my favorite part of special effects would have to be the practical side of special effects. Practical special effects, well, what's that? Well, practical special effects include all the effects that obviously aren't made by a computer, they're made by artisans, made by hand. These sort of things include animatronics, puppets, you got makeups going on, buckets of blood being thrown on people, and people in monster suits. All sorts of really cool stuff that's really there. Oh, I see. And ironically, you yourself, robot, should probably know what practical effects are, but that's okay. Uh, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Let's just get back to it. I was lucky enough to grow up in the 80s and 90s during a time that I like to call the height of practical effects. This was before computers came on the scene, and back then we had a little something called movie magic, where you know that all the effects in these films were made by some asshole in a fucking workshop, so you were like, wait a minute, how the fuck did they make that guy's hand blow up? And you had no idea how they did it, but you know that they did it like with a puppet or with a fake head or camera tricks or editing. Some kind of human ingenuity. Someone clever figured out how to do this shit. Today, I feel like a lot of the wonder is gone because every time you see a special effect, a lot of people just assume that it's made by a computer and most of the time it is, unfortunately. One of the top guys in the special effects industry, Dennis Mirren stated that today special effects in movies are no longer special and we need to figure out why is that? Where did the sense of awe and wonder go? I love movie magic. Why is it disappearing? Every time I look around it's gone. Wait, wait what are you talking about? You're saying that some special effects are made by people and not computers? <laughs> Whatever. I know that that's a crazy concept for you, especially since you were born in 1994, kind of at the rise of the, the turning point where the computer started taking over. But let me tell you that there are still practical effects going on today, but most people don't even think that they're practical. They just think that they're CGI because they think that everything is CGI. Everything is CGI, though. Shut up! What's your problem with sci-fi? Too much CGI, man. I like my special effects old school. Good point. Well, I had an extremely insightful interview with Alec Gillis from ADI or Amalgamated Dynamics Incorporated, which is a practical effects studio here in LA. They're some of the top guys, and I got a lot of information about what's going on. <laughs> This is Alec Gillis. You may know me as the co-founder of Amalgamated Dynamics Incorporated, or perhaps you've seen our videos on our YouTube channel, Studio ADI. So many of you have responded to our behind the scenes videos of The Thing and The Green Goblin, I Am Legend, and we listen to you guys. And you folks have told us how much you still love the traditional techniques of animatronics and makeup effects. Big studios are increasingly bypassing our traditional techniques. <laughs> So Alec, let's start by talking about the problems that we have today. What do you feel are the major stumbling blocks for practical effects, um, and even uh, CGI effects, effects in general in the movie industry? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I think, um, first of all, like I've, I've gotten some feedback uh, through, the, uh, through the internet that uh, somebody's saying like, why are you ragging on digital? And that's not what my intent is. My right. intent is not to suppress an art form in favor of another art form, yes. it's to eliminate that suppression. Right now, my art form is being suppressed and yeah. another one is being promoted, not necessarily to the benefit of the people doing the work, yeah. because they're 100%. not getting rich. I don't know any digital artists that are getting rich. No, definitely not. Uh, in 100%. fact, they're going out of and, business. And especially when you see things like Iron Man 3, which the, the effects are the star of the show and yeah. making 
one billion dollars worldwide now, and you guys don't see any back end on that. Right, I mean, right. it's it's shutting down, you know, CGI people as well as practical effects yeah. people. Yeah, and I think that that issue of like you know back end and participation and all that kind of stuff that that is a real issue and something that does need to be explored. For me, I always thought you know well, uh, if we're getting paid well mm-hmm. for the work for hire, but we're not getting back end, if we're getting respected. Uh, then whatever, who cares? We didn't right. get into this to become rich. You do right? it because you love it. But the problem is that I feel that studios are grinding people down to the yeah. point where they're putting them out of business. Well, uh, then that is not, that's not just, uh, they're not paying us well enough. They're actually doing harm. Yeah, they're taking advantage of artists. I mean, yeah. and that's kind of what corporations do. But, yeah, I mean, you and, know, whether and, and, it's comic books or any other right. art form. Because there is a market force that says, you got to make this thing faster and cheaper than you did last time, right? Yeah. It's this constant honing. Right. And, and, but you can you know, only go so far with that. You can only that. go so far, I mean, although you know, we're still going. We're still, you know, I mean, just to stay in business. And that's crazy. And lots of money. That, that I, I don't disagree with the basic structure of big Hollywood. Mm-hmm. It's just that the short-sightedness and the kind of right. um, lack of vision to me really is is depressing right it, you you see people uh kind of following these these old models uh that they think despite the fact that there are places like pixar right yeah. pixar is a corporation mm-hmm. apple is a corporation but they seem to be doing something right right you know and they seem to be giving people room they seem to be fostering creativity and encouraging right. but it's not the case with Hollywood, and 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 I'm not I'm not exactly sure why. Yeah, me neither. Um, uh, maybe it's the the rapid turnover rate, right. you know. I well, I I think that I'm hoping I'm trying to be positive about it. I hope that at some point it's there's a backlash against that, and I'm yeah. I'm hoping uh, you know people start realizing, and that's another thing that we're trying to do is bring that to the forefront. Where it's like, don't you love how these practical effects look? Don't they just look amazing? I mean, I'd rather see a shitty puppet than see shitty CGI yeah. any day of the week. Yeah. You know, yeah. any day of the week. Yeah. And, I mean, another question I have is just, is the time, too. It's like, I know that they, they're they always not giving you guys enough time. Yeah. And it's like, I don't understand why, if there's so much pre-production going on, why are they at the end being like, oh, you only have three months to work on something? Yeah. They, they, they have been cutting cutting down our time. But the reason that, that pre-production schedules are getting so short now is that uh, studios, it's the money that studios use... Uh, they're borrowing from line of lines of credit, and they pay interest on the on that money. And now the money is the the dollar amounts are so great. You make it a two hundred million dollar movie, yeah. and you start borrowing that money, you start paying interest on that immediately. Right. So they want to stall off paying the interest. They want to minimize those costs. So there are right now there it's it's sort of a Hollywood wide um, studio. Uh, mandate uh the, in in most of the big studios that it's a three month pr- pre-production t- schedule really used to be nine months used to be wow. six months now three they just say months. that's all we can afford folks because of interest it's because they're spending 200 million bucks on a movie right. because the hollywood model has become chasing the big tent pole right. summer blockbuster because that is statistically where they make their money so from a business standpoint i get it you know they're doing what they got to do to be, and they're getting this and that's why the corporate sort of factory model of VFX, why uh, it, it works better for digital than it does for practical. Yeah. Because, you know, practical stuff is created in a... Not that digital isn't handcrafted. Of yeah. course it is, right? Of course. But the practical stuff, it gets down to, you know, 60 people working with messy shit and you yeah. know bring it all, all yeah, you know yeah. on set and, and i've been you know, in a shop it gets yeah. pretty wild and woolly in there whereas the corporate structure of uh digital the, the digital world mirrors what I- the corporate structure of right. the studio and they get that right they go okay we put you know we bring put the money in this end and it goes through a chain of cubicles and out comes our shot at the other end how right. wonderful right. and what you do is you shoot a plate and you're done, and you're, yeah, you stay on your right, schedule. Right. You don't have things breaking. You don't have all the horror stories that are exaggerated yeah. about practical effects. And so they're attracted to the easy, more expensive route. Right. You know, whatever it makes their lives easier. And 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 for us fans, we say, yeah, but it, it doesn't enhance the experience. Right. It isn't the right combination of practical and digital but that's not what they're into they're into it for the business model and ease and laziness not for the experience of you 
And nowadays, you know, this is something that I've been seeing where how, you know, like we were talking earlier, how things are so polished to a point where they're not even human anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't even connect with them anymore. You see things like Kickstarter coming out mm -hmm. where it's essentially public funding of the arts. I mean, we did a Kickstarter ourselves. I mean, we're not funded by anybody and it's, it's crazy that we can make a, a show with as much production value as we can, you know, it's just two people, two assholes mm -hmm. in an apartment, you know, so, no. you know, <laughs> well, you know, we got a little bit of talent behind us, you know. Whatever, no, I was going to say it's a condo, isn't it? You know, <laughs> I wish. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, how do you, do you feel like things like Kickstarter, I know you're doing your Harbinger <laughs> Down, you're trying mm -hmm. to fund your thing right now, which is a return to practical effects, creature filmmaking. That's right. Um, I mean, do you think that this is where it's going to happen? Like, where we're going to see, like, new practical effects movies coming out, hopefully? I, mean, um, I, I, I think what, what we're seeing with Kickstarter is, it is, you know, it's, oh, it's the overused term, it's the democratization of filmmaking, right? Yeah. Where the public gets to vote on whether or not this project gets made. Yeah. Um, and it is geared towards smaller projects, towards independent projects. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a couple of exceptions with, uh, you know, Veronica Mars and, and, and right. Zach Braff's movie. Um, I actually had reservations about going on Kickstarter because of those two. Right. But were it not for the fan outpouring and basically being called to a higher mission yeah. to help save this art of mine, um, I probably wouldn't have done it because I had people telling me that for a couple of years prior to, you should do it, you should do it. And yeah. I thought, it sounds kind of self-serving to me, right? right? But then when we put the Thing video out, when we put the Green Goblin video out, and I saw, oh, wow, there are legions of people, or so it yeah. seems. Maybe there's enough that we could actually do something. And yeah. the fans have stepped up fantastically. We, we have people who are like saying, I, I'm going to go in debt. To, and we're like saying, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't yeah, do don't that. do that. Don't, don't do that. that. We'll but, figure but out I a way. You know, but don't do that. But, uh, and, and we've had some real high-end people. We've got like yeah. nine, seven or nine uh Ten thousand wow. dollar pledgers. Wow! People who are doctors who said, "I always wanted to do this, but I became a doctor right. instead." And like, well, now you're rich, so you have a chance to support yeah. all these artists who want to, you know. And it's a great thing, uh, but we're a ways away from making it yeah. happen. Yeah. As I was saying earlier, it's crazy to me that you know people think people look at three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and think, "Oh, that's a fuck ton of money." That's nothing to make a movie. That's no especially a creature film, and. I really want to see something. I really want to see your project get made. And I feel like if if everyone who watches this video donates like $4, like you guys are totally going to hit your goal. And we're all going to get a fucking badass creature flick that like I've been waiting for because personally, I've been starved for horror films. I haven't seen anything that I've been wowed by in years. I mean... I would, I would be honored to give you that experience. And... You're, come on set, too. Come on set and yeah, watch Yeah, you guys doing. fucking donate so hey. I can come on set. And you worked on it. You worked in a creature shop, right? Yeah. Or was it just visual effects? Was it, it was, was, they, did, they did a little bit of everything. They did okay. a little bit of everything. We'll get you stippling latex. I know. Well, I always stuff. wanted to learn how to how to poke the hairs into the stuff. Oh, I think yeah, I'd be that, really good at that. Yeah, I, I, you might I, be. I, I'm <laughs> terrible at it. I, I like really but, weird. I like like rolling change and stuff and like counting. Right. Like, I, I like really weird little, that stuff? little tasks. Do you so. think that that's a female thing? Because most I think it great... Is. Hair workers are women. Why? I think it is. Why would it's, you? You know, it it's because we're innately pickers. You know, like we're we're like you have that motherly like you know mm -hmm. oh, it's a, mm -hmm. you know uh, you know you just can't help it as a woman. Like there, you want to peel yes. that sunburn that's like exactly and right. and that's why you're good at that. You know, women are good at the hair stuff. It's I just think it's so. very detail oriented. It, it, yeah, I, I I go back to that uh, hunter gatherer. Right. Yeah. It's like like I I can't find the ripe fruit in the in the but my right. wife can. Right. You know? Right. And right. you're right. I have four daughters. So if I walk through, it's summertime and I walk through the house, they're like chasing me. No! Yeah. You've got a blackhead. I've got a thousand of them. <laughs> I like, block myself in the bathroom until they leave me alone. I know. I don't know, man. It's, it's just a female thing. Very I got interesting. it. Oh, I mean, we were, we were watching Dark Crystal the other day and there's this part where they're going through this... Uh, forest that's like all mm. the flowers are puppets yeah. and shit and you're yeah. just like god damn it this amazing. looks so yeah. good yeah. like yeah. i hope to do crazy. that kind of stuff i hope to i hope we get funded because yeah. i think this will be a good stepping stone but regardless the great thing is that it's that this has been a learning experience for me it's given me a mission yeah. to really bring this stuff back because yeah. uh it, not not only for myself for my people but for the fans and i yeah. think for for 
for well, all movie goers. I mean, for for the art of it, you know. I mean, it's just there's it's got that personal yeah. touch. And if people know? didn't care, I'd leave. Right. But people care. But people do care. People like do people care. care. We have to expose these children now to this stuff because they're not going to know any better. You got to show them. Like, yeah, it can't all be video games. You right? know. Yeah. It, there should be video games. There, there should, should be yes. digital effects. There and should also there should be, be stop effects. motion and practical. Yes. Right? Yes. Love Why stop not? motion. In fact, I'm 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 going to advertise this film as a practical effects film yeah. in the way that you could like Paranorman a stop motion right. fantasy you know right. people know stop motion we need to right. brand the term practical effects which yeah. includes miniatures and creatures yeah love you know, miniatures makeup, I fucking stuff. love miniatures yeah. like yeah. Just, even if I know it's a miniature I'm like I love it it's just I yeah. like mini anything that's miniaturized yeah. I like or, and I it makes know, much like... more interesting behind the scenes photos too <laughs> yeah. right oh yeah it's not a monitor guys well, and, that's, and that's the thing too <laughs> we were talking about it's like actors as well it's like you can't act off a fucking tennis ball like Jesus right. Christ oh, like oh. so one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that with visual effects the actors themselves don't have anything to act off of they have some asshole in a green suit or a fucking tennis ball or some bullshit or nothing at all and you know they can't act off of that I mean like how much better are the performances when you have a fucking monster in your face covered in goo yeah. I mean it's, it's that old thing about acting being reacting what are you reacting to if you're not reacting to anything but your imagination again it's another cumulative artificial element yeah. in a film that just makes it all bogus, you know? Yeah. Uh, Stan Winston used to say that. Stan would say, you know why our stuff in Aliens looks so great? Because Sigourney believes in it. Yeah. And she's the conduit of the audience to the yeah. action, right? 100%. And she, she would just work herself up to where you had no doubt, because she was right there with it. Yeah. Here's another little thing with the acting, right? In Alien Resurrection, the Jean-Pierre Genet mm -hmm. was the big uh, newborn yeah. character. Uh, but remember that moment where the head comes in and goes, and yeah. bites at her? Yeah. That was an accident. Yeah. That was us, somebody, something happened. Happy a short or something. Man. And she stayed in the moment. Yeah. And she did that thing and reacted to it. Yeah. And it made it into the film. And yeah. that... That's a randomness. That's embracing that random. Right. Well, it's chaos, you know? I mean, it's like practical effects also bring a dimension of, of chaos, which is good. Like, all sorts of amazing things are born out of chaos. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I, people don't realize that. People are like, oh, order, order. It's like, order yeah, ain't, order right. ain't all that Christ crapped up to me. The thought is that the, the, the more you can control your medium and your art, the better it will be. And and if no. you are really an artist, like, you know, if you sculpt, you know that the clay gives you something back. Yeah. The different clays give you different th different paints. You right. mentioned oil paints versus acrylic. Right. Watercolor, it gives you something different back. If you try to control it and make it all yours, yeah. you're going to lose the fight. And, right. and you need to be a partner with your medium. And that's what yeah. practical well, effects is about. It's a weird story. Again, talking about my mom. She was in art school for a hot minute, and she did this oil painting of some bananas or some shit. Left it out to dry. It rained on the oil painting. Fucked it all up. She had to turn it in. Everyone loved it. Yeah. Everyone loved it. They were like, this is the best painting we've ever seen. Yeah. It was abstract and weird. And <laughs> yeah. That was her biggest painting. And it's like... Yeah, you know, she could never live up to never that. Never live up to that. <laughs> happy you know? accident. It's just like happy accident. <laughs> Well, Alec, it was a pleasure having you on. I'm so glad we got to talk about this. I feel much better. I hope you feel a little bit better. Uh, and definitely, again, Harbinger Down. You guys should definitely check it out on Kickstarter right here. Check it out. Definitely donate. Like I said, man, four, any bucks, a dollar, whatever. Like, we just got to, we got to get people on board for this. So if you're a big believer in practical effects like I am and you want this art form to survive and keep seeing awesome stuff uh, that Alec and his crew makes, then please definitely check it out and definitely support, you know, every, all of our efforts here. Like, just get the word out. Tell your friends. If Lance was here, he'd say, come on, everybody. <laughs> Step up. All right. <laughs> We can do it. Be, be a He's got a way cooler voice. I know he does. Yeah, he that does. Man, he that does. man's got the Well, voice. I was I was watching his thing. And he's like, "Be a part of the tribe," and I was oh, like, "I want to be a part of the tribe." Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm I in I it. Don't. All right, Alec. Thank you again for being thank here. You. It thank was a you. pleasure. Hope to have you back one day. Absolutely. Awesome. So this has been a mini version of my interview with Alec Gillis. If you're interested and you want to hear more and see the full version, which is over an hour long, where you're going to get all sorts of more details on what's going on with Hollywood and why CGI is being overused and practical effects are being underused, more about why practical effects are replaced by CGI, like in the case of The Thing with 2011, ADI had a deal where they made all these amazing puppets, they made all these amazing practical effects, animatronics, all sorts of stuff, and it ended up getting cut, 
and most of the film ended up being CGI instead, and it sucked. Same thing with I Am Legend. Anyways, it's really interesting, and you should totally check it out.